How's it going everybody? You know who it is. My name is Sun Wu and in today's video we are gonna discuss the OP1's phone effect. Full disclosure, I won't be able to explain to you with 100% certainty what some of the parameters are doing just because there is no documentation on it so I can't be sure of it but I think I have enough of an understanding of this effect to explain the basics to you and help you understand what's going on. So let's dive right in. I think the easiest way to describe the phone effect is to say that it's a granular pitch shift effect. That means it takes your original audio, chops it into tiny bits and then replays those tiny bits at a higher speed or at a lower speed, meaning at a higher pitch or at a lower pitch. But since it's chopped into little chunks, it will stay the same tempo as your original audio. It also introduces some glitchiness in the process, but that's about it. So let's have a look at the specific parameters. The first parameter we're gonna have a look at is the telemetry parameter, which basically is a mix knob between your original signal and the affected signal. Maybe this parameter affects something else under the hood, but I think it's easiest to just look at it as a mix knob. The second parameter is the tone parameter and this parameter decides at what pitch my affected audio is being played back. Right now I'm playing only the affected signal, but if I mix the original and the affected, I could try to get them to harmonize in some way. Always remember that when pressing shift and adjusting a parameter you can do more fine adjustments so you can really look for whatever pitch you want to get out of this. Like this for example. And now I think we get into the more complicated parameters. Let's start with the GSM parameter. Again, take this with a pinch of salt, but I think the GSM parameter defines how long the grains of audio or the bits of audio that your sound is chopped into are. Meaning if the GSM is low, the bits are tiny. And if the GSM is high, the granules are larger. There may be also something like an envelope going on that smears one grain into the next because at higher levels I feel like it, everything sounds a little bit smoother. As if they are overlapping grains that are faded in and out and at lower grain sizes it sounds a lot more glitchy and harsh. But again this is all speculative. The way you use the GSM parameter varies vastly depending on what your source audio material is. Let's have a listen to a few different examples. Let's start with some drums. First let's adjust the pitch. And we're only hearing the affected signal. And now we play with the GSM. As you can hear on the drums, the higher GSM sounds very choppy and you're losing a lot of the transients. But if we turn the GSM down and have smaller chunks of audio, we get our drums back to sounding like drums. They're still glitchy, but much better than with a high GSM. Yep, that's it for the drums. And lastly on the piano, this is the low GSM. And this is the high GSM. I think on more tonal elements or melodic instruments, the high GSM works a lot better than the lower one because the transient aren't as important as on drums and Rather, you want a more smeared signal, therefore high GSM is recommended by me. But this is an experimental effect, so do whatever you like. 
And the last parameter, which is the baud rate. I believe this parameter sets how often each of the grains is being repeated. And therefore, if it's repeating the same grain for a longer time, it will drop other grains in between and therefore you get a more glitchy sound, just like this. You can see it's playing long grains and also repeating them often, so basically you can't hear what the vocal sample is saying anymore. As opposed to when I turn it down. Let's test it with the low GSM, meaning the grains are shorter now, but they're still being repeated at the same amount. You can hear the vocal a little bit better now, but it still sounds odd because of the repetition of the same grains. So these are the basic parameters of the phone effect. How you use them is of course up to you, but here are just two examples of what I think you could easily do with it. First, back to the vocal sample. Say my original vocal sample has the right speed or the right length for my beat. Microphone check, eins, zwei, eins, zwei. But I don't like the pitch of it, so I want it to have a higher pitch, but still play the same duration. If I adjusted the sample in my drum sampler, if I raised the pitch, it would also play quicker. But with this, I could raise the pitch of it, but still have it play the same duration. It may sound horrible for this sample, but for some samples it does work out. For example, pitch down, I don't think it sounds too bad, or if you turn up the GSM. You can certainly use that sample. Or another way of using this effect is to add harmonies to your original audio material. So this is the original pitch. And I set the tone in a way that it's a fifth above the original pitch, sounding like this. And if I play them both together, So now every time I play a note, I play the original pitch as well as a fifth above it. And if I could play piano, it would sound quite nice. And that's it for this tutorial on the OP1's phone effect. I hope you learned something. If you want to learn more, check the playlist this video belongs to or contact me for private online lessons, link down in the description. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I would appreciate a like and a comment down below. Subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you don't miss the next video. I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, have a wonderful time. Peace.